I want to talk about the, the liability shield issue. Um, there are a lot of different perspectives on this. But let me talk about it in the context of those we're discussing tonight. Seniors in nursing homes, people with disabilities who need home and community-based services, folks who are in communities of color and others who need the benefit of Medicaid. The Republican proposal, in my judgment, when you look at the, the, the liability proposal, would slam the doors of justice uh, to those who uh, want to bring in action. Uh, we know that we've got, we've had a lot of commentary lately on our criminal justice system and, and the defects, the shortcomings, even the racism that I believe is, is uh, per, that permeates that system. In this context, we're talking about the civil justice system. What do we do about that part of our justice system? The ability for a citizen to bring an action in a court of law uh, to, um, to deal with a, uh, an injury of some kind, either by way of negligence or intentional conduct. But in this context, we have a, pr a proposal by the majority to short circuit to undermine uh, that system of justice. It will affect those we're here to talk about tonight in, in very real ways, whether they're low-income workers or people with disabilities or older adults uh, or even just more broadly essential workers. Well, why do I say that? Well, because if you're going to use a, a crisis like we're in now to try to achieve gains that some in this chamber have tried to achieve for years uh, in the so-called tort system, uh, that really the civil justice system, um, and you, you paint with a very broad brush, uh, you're going to slam those doors of justice uh, pretty tightly. J just by way of a, a comment from a law professor, Georgetown law professor David Vladek, recently explained in reference to this proposal that, and he, he, using his words here, the, quote, extreme reach, unquote, of the proposal vastly exceeds, quote, any prior so-called tort reform bill that has been introduced in Congress, unquote. He, he go, went on to call this corporate liability shield uh, provision, quote, essentially impenetrable. That's how he described the the, the strength of this shield, and warn that they, such proposals would give, quote, license for irresponsible and reckless conduct, unquote. The bill, uh, and when it comes to liability, would also preempt all state laws requiring businesses to act reasonably. It would impose a heightened, so-called clear and convincing uh, burden of proof on plaintiffs instead of the typical preponderance of the evidence standard. We know that in our system, in a civil case, the preponderance of the evidence standard is, is uh, the lowest standard. Just a, a little more than 50 percent the jury would have to determine uh, in terms of liability. We know that under the criminal system, uh, in order to find guilt, it has to be found by, beyond a reasonable doubt. That's the highest standard. There are some, some cases that are given the middle uh, standard of so-called clear and convincing. Uh, so that burden of proof is right in the middle. What this bill would do would be to elevate in a, uh, in a civil lawsuit, elevate it from preponderance to clear and convincing, which would be, uh, I think, a step in the wrong direction. The proposal would also force a worker, a consumer, uh, a resident of a nursing home, or even a patient, to show that a business failed to make, quote, reasonable efforts, unquote, to comply with any applicable government standard. The issue here is that the federal government hasn't issued, issued any mandatory standards. So these entities, many of them employers of one kind or another, sometimes very large employers, would be able to follow any standard they choose. They could choose a local standard or a state standard or a federal standard, even if the one they choose is the weakest standard as it relates to the protection of the worker. Now, what, what the, the administration could have done, which um, 
I called for and many members of the Senate called for is to promulgate a standard against which the actions of an employer could be measured. One, one idea was to promulgate an emergency temporary standard. I don't know why the Department of Labor wouldn't do that in the middle of a, the worst public health crisis in a century. Why the, the Department of Labor would not simply take that step. That would give clarity to, uh, for employers. That would give clarity to uh, so many Americans about what the standard has to be in a workplace to keep people safe from a raging virus. But they chose not to do that. So without any mandatory standards, uh, it's wide open. And then we're supposed to believe that, that uh, taking away uh, the right to bring an action is somehow going to be just fine for a period of time. So an emer a temporary emergency or emergency temporary standard by the Department of Labor should have been promulgated months ago. And they could still do it and, and remove the uncertainty, the lack of clarity that prevails right now. So this bill with regard to the uh, liability provisions would immunize health care providers and facilities from any claims, any claims arising from, quote, coronavirus-related health care services, unquote. That's pretty broad. Now, how does the bill define that? Well, de the bill defines that as follows. The treatment of patients, quote, for any purpose, quote, for any purpose purpose, unquote. Not merely the treatment of COVID-19 patients during uh, the, this public health emergency. So that is about as broad as it gets. And uh, it would be in place that liabil impenetrable liability shield will be in place for several years. Now it gets worse when it comes to people with disabilities. To add insult to injury, uh, just consider what we did last, uh, just last week. Our nation celebrated the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, a law that extended civil rights protections to people with disabilities in every state. Uh, President George H.W. Bush signed the bill into law, and Republicans and Democrats and independents all over the country celebrated the 30th anniversary. Literally the next day, the majority proposed this corporate liability shield, which would blow a hole in the protections provided by the so-called ADA after the celebration of 30 years. That makes it possible, that bill, the Americans with Disabilities Act, makes it possible for people with disabilities to be full participants in American society. But this corporate liability shield would undermine those very protections. It would also decimate federal protections granted under other landmark employment and civil rights laws, including the Age Discrimination and Employment Act, so-called ADEA, the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, the Occupational, OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Act, one of the seminal uh, actions uh, or, or uh, pieces of legislation to protect workers. It would also adversely impact the Fair Labor Standards Act as well as Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. I don't know how you could have more of a wrecking ball in place for these landmark pieces of legislation uh, in the middle of a pandemic. So Mr. President, I will wrap up by saying that uh, we have a lot of work to do obviously in these negotiations. And in the midst of the negotiations, we ought to be thinking about the most vulnerable, whether it's older Americans or children, people with disabilities, folks in communities of color who have been adversely impacted in so many ways, uh, ever more so at this time of crisis. I won't enter it into the record because it'll be uh, on the record anyway, but I'm holding in my hand a letter that we sent to Leader McConnell uh, that outlines all of these concerns. It's a letter uh, led by uh, Senator Duckworth from Illinois, Senator Warren from Massachusetts, and myself, as well as now 
more than 40 of our colleagues uh, that goes through these concerns that we have for investments in strategies to get the nursing home death number down, investments in home and community-based services, the concerns we raised about the corporate liability shield, as, as well as uh, an overdue investment in Medicaid, the program that takes care of the most vulnerable among us. And with that, Mr. President, I would yield the floor.